Good morning. In today's video, I'll be talking about the passive lumbar extension test, which is a special test used to diagnose lumbar instability. Lumbar instability has been defined as a significant decrease in the capacity of certain stabilizing systems of the spine to maintain normal intervertebral alignment and motion during certain movements. As far as indications for the test, the diagnosis of lumbar instability is often based on medical images of the lumbar spine in positions of flexion and extension. The clinical definition of instability is often ambiguous and may rely on certain other tests such as the instability catch sign, which is the inability to return to an upright posture following full standing forward flexion with complaints of pain, the painful catch sign, in which both lower extremities drop quickly during a bilateral straight leg raise, and the apprehension sign, which is a, su a subjective report from the patient of lumbar collapse or instability during movements during activities of daily living. Other indications for the passive lumbar extension test include a patient history of spondylysis or spondylolisthesis, which could be feelings of uh, the back giving way, feelings of needing to crack or pop the back throughout the day, recurrent episodes of lower back pain, pain during transitional movements, worsening of uh, lower back symptoms following sustained postures, frequent muscle spasms, and fear of movement. As far as contraindications for the passive lumbar ex extension test, there are none. A biomechanical explanation of the passive lumbar extension test uh, I'll demonstrate on a skeleton model in which during the test the therapist will apply a slight traction force through the legs and then apply an extension force through the spine by lifting the legs up to 30 centimeters. You can see here through this area that the spinous processes and the spinal foramen will be approximating during this test. The tissues involved in the test include three different systems uh, of the body to, that which should stabilize the lumbar spine. These systems include the os an osseo-ligamentous system, which include the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments, facet joint capsules, intervertebral discs, and the intervertebral bodies themselves, especially the pars interarticularis, which is often uh, impacted with a spondylolisthesis. The second system is the active or muscular system in which the transverse abdominis and multifidus muscles are key stabilizing muscles of the lumbar spine. The final system that uh, is involved with this passive lumbar extension test is the neural control system in which the timing and recruitment of these muscles is key for proper stabilization of the lumbar spine. These nerves include the thoracolumbar dorsal rami which innervate the multifidus muscle and then the thoracoabdominal nerves, including the subcostal nerve, iliohypogastric nerve, and ilioinguinal nerve, which innervate the transverse abdominus muscle. The metrics of our passive lumbar extension test are actually quite good, with a sensitivity of 84.2% and a specificity of 90.4%. The test was created as the psychometrics of PAVM, extension and pavum flexion are act quite good for specificity but low for sensitivity. The steps of the test are quite easy. The patient is to lie in a prone position on the plinth as in a relaxed position as possible. A therapist will stand at the foot of the plinth and grasp the patient's ankles and apply slight traction force. At that point the therapist will raise the extended lower extremities up to about 30 centimeters. The therapist will then note the patient's response. Expected outcomes of a positive test include pain, apprehension, or a sense of heaviness in the low back. Uh, expected outcomes of a negative test would be none of these symptoms. Demonstrating a passive lumbar extension test. The purpose of this test is to check for lumbar instability. What to expect in this test, I'm going to ask you to lay in the prone position. At that point, I'm going to apply a slight traction force to your legs and then raise them about 30 centimeters. You may feel a sense of heaviness in your lower back, which would be indicative of a positive test. 
Okay, so let's begin the test by having you lay in the prone position on your stomach. I want you to relax as much as possible. And at this point, I'm going to apply traction force to your legs and raise them 30 centimeters. Did you feel any pain or heaviness in your lower back? That would be indicative of a negative test.